This is a project that I did in um, a place called San Salvario in Turin. And um, this is lovely Antonio, who I worked with, who his family owned a, um, one of the bread shops in the area. The area of San Salvario, it, it was one of the most visible areas um, for immigration or, or kind of migration or immigration really into Turin um, and it witnessed race riots in the 1990s and I was interested in the way in which you could see this immigration into the area through the way in which the food establishments had changed. So what you got was, um, I'll just go back to it, what you got was kebab shops opening up? Was kind of and a lot of the traditional places were quite sort of um, quite upset about this this kind of changing environment. But what I did was worked with six different um, food establishments, and because I worked as a chef to fund myself through art college, I had to volunteer my kind of services as a chef and um, to work for them for a number of days. Not really as a chef, but just kind of as a lackey. Basically, I was cleaning the floors. I was doing the, but in return. I asked them to come up with a food stuff that they would like to share amongst each other. And Antonio came up with um, the bread cooked according to the recipe of his grandfather during the Second World War when the area was run by fascists, when there was only one oven in the area. They had to make particularly salty bread so that it would keep for a year. So this is Bebo's kebab shop. Um, I work with Bebo. This Bebo here. What came out of this was people's stories. And what I asked people to do was come up with the food stuff that they would share between each other, um, a kind of dream pack that they would taste at night before going to sleep. And they would then send postcards, they would send photographs between each other. And what came out of it was these amazing stories of people. So there's Bebo. I don't know if any of you are into football. I'm not particularly knowledgeable. But what it turned out was when he came over um, from Egypt, he started working as a chef and worked for Maradona. So he had this wonderful little, there's Maradona in the middle, he had this wonderful little kind of photo album of all these people that he'd, he'd worked for. And he offered up uh, Riso Americano. Um, again, this kind of highlighted the way in which food almost becomes an area for cultural discussion or, or kind of um, this Riso Americano, when he called it just prawn rice, it didn't sell at all. As soon as he called it Riso Americano and put the word American in, it sold like hotcakes. So basically these were the kind of little packages people were given and I spent my time and this was again there was a sort of menu people could taste the things between each other and then write postcards but they never met again it was almost sort of through their um, through their senses but also it was the idea of can you taste something ingest it and actually could that come into your kind of nighttime thoughts could it kind of I know that's me delivering these. I told you it would be a whistle stop tour. So this is a piece of work I did at um, South London Gallery uh, called Adonia, where I recreated aspects of the ancient um, Greek festival of Adonia, which celebrated women's unfulfilled desires um, or kind of wants or lusts or lovers or loves. And in ancient Greece it was held, it was a kind of unofficial festival that was held on the rooftops at night. It was very bawdy. Um, it involved drink and it involved um, also lettuce and spices, and that's why I was really interested in the way in which foodstuffs um, were used in this kind of mist. And what I did was I asked the South London Gallery if I could um, have the gallery for one night and invite women to come to the gallery and spend the night with me in the gallery. And I did try and get onto the roof of the gallery. They wouldn't let me do that because an essential part of the Adonia Festival was that women would grow half germinated um, lettuce seeds in pots, which they would then throw down from the roof. And kind of as they threw them down, sort of call out the name of their lover or their frustration or their. Um, this was all based on the uh, Adonis um, myth of the fact that he was. Um, sort of died in his prime, gored by a bull, and uh, died on a, a bed of lettuce. Lettuce was seen as a way of dampening down desires, um, spices as a way of kind of arousing them. So what I did with the woman that um, came and spent the night with me is we made shrines to lovers, they brought along photographs, we made Inex birds to call past loves, which we um, put on the trees at dawn. Um, these are the little kind of half germinated um, lettuce pots and this is one of the women throwing down this is in the middle of the night so it's a particularly bad quality um, but what was interesting is we all really used this kind of myth in a very real sense and people came to um, 
another thing I did for it was uh, people left their stories as, as to why they'd come along. Um, they had to make lettuce masks in disguise. Um, so I've got this video of them talking about, you know, there were some women that came along because they wanted to have an open relationship and they just broached this with their partner or another one because she was trying to forget about um, a man who, uh, uh, who she was in love with. I mean, there's lots of different, very sort of personal stories as well. Um, this is a piece of work that's just come down that was up at Peckham Space and this is a kind of photographic landscape with a lot of the photographic work that I make. It's almost making um, worlds or places that you can kind of step into and this developed out of um, sort of research into Peckham's history as the market garden of London. It was once a place where most of the fruit and vegetables for London were grown um, but also William Blake's relationship with um, Peckham, he had a vision of angels in a tree and I instead looked to create sort of visions of trees out of very ordinary, you know when you open up mandarins you get those kind of tiny little almost tree-like things, I've been, yeah, so um, 